very nice to see you. Thank you for visiting us. Speaker Good morning, Mr. President. Welcome here. Yeah, so, yeah. You brought good weather. Yes. <laughs> Secretary General, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. To welcome you in this building of the Senate today. Yeah. <laughs> I start? Yeah. Your Excellencies, it's a great privilege for us to receive you here today. The Russian army continues to fill us that has entered a second year now. several times in the past year in Dutch society, both visibly and under the surface. First remember those we lost during World War II all over the world. We will do so by keeping a two-minute silence in Parliament. Mr. President, I wish unto you and unto all of Ukraine the hope Ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's an honor to address you, to, uh, to you, all of you, the representatives of both houses of the Parliament of the Netherlands, the chairman of parliamentary committees, and you, honorable speakers of the House of Representatives and the Senate of the States General. When democracy is real with a stable tradition in the country, the Parliament is the heart of such country, and I'm sure that the heart of the Netherlands today will feel what the hearts of Ukrainians long for. A year has passed since I addressed, uh, thank you so much for that possibility, and I addressed the, the Parliament and the people of the Kingdom of the Netherlands uh, for the first time. Uh, and on the 36th day of the full-scale war, I spoke about why you and I, all Europeans, the whole world should unite. Unite to defend freedom and human lives. A year ago I said that this war cannot be forgiven. None of the crimes committed by Russia, and I said that the Hague knew exactly how to bring all Russian murders to justice. And today is the time to thank all of you. Thank you, your great country and your leadership. And I'm grateful to you for the fact that we've achieved the greatest unity in Europe, which people only dreamed, dreamed of for decades. And it wouldn't have happened without the Netherlands, without your leadership. Thank you all. 
and I'm grateful to you for helping to protect what you value. The Netherlands defends freedom, defends the rule of law and democracy, defends Europe and our common way of life, the lives of free people, free, free people, not, not at the expense of someone else's slavery, but thanks to the rights and respect for all. This is our Europe. No will now think that he can burn the values of our Europe in the fire of aggression. It seemed to Russia that Europe was weak. Well, now Russia tries uh, to figure out how to hide its own weakness. And I am grateful to you that The Hague, a city associated with international law in the world, is becoming a real hub of justice. Justice in the name of all those who suffered from aggression and other international crimes. This is the year of our cooperation with you. And I'm here to thank everyone in the Netherlands, everyone from the parliament to the smallest community, from His Majesty the King and the royal family, to every citizen of the Netherlands, from the government and to every family that helped, helped us, my great appreciation, helped us, helped Ukrainians who found the refuge in your, in your country. And thanks all, all of you, together we are truly making life protected. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now to identify new issues to take stock of this year. Issues that are important not only for our country, not only for Ukraine, but for all Europe and everyone in the world who values freedom the same way you and I do. And I will mention three points. The first one, Ukrainians are united by the desire to win. But it is not only our desire to win back what belongs to us, and we definitely don't want to grab someone else's. We want to destroy the villainy, villainy with which the terrorist state came. The villainy is when Russian anti-ship missiles strike ordinary, shop, ordinary shopping centers. Really, yesterday, and the day before yesterday, they've been, and it, you know, each week we see, we see some things like this like this terrible tragedy. And the, the villainy is when terrorist state has a goal to leave the neighbor nation in winter in total, total blackout. The villainy is when Russia occupies a nuclear power plant, puts multiple, multiple launch rocket systems on its territory and under the cover of nuclear reactors, fires at neighboring towns. All this concentrated villainy should lose together with Russia. And when the blue and yellow Ukrainian flag returns, returns freedom to the lands occupied by Russia in parallel with this, the terrorist state must feel that the world does not want even to cross paths with Russia and anything Russian. So, yes to sanctions. So, yes to Russia's isolation, yes to the pressure on Russian citizens to make them looking for the regime, Russian regime change in the country, yes to, to sentences for the terror, yes to universal rules for all judicians to seize Russian assets and use them to compensate for damages from aggression. We have to achieve this to the maximum to bring joint peace faster. The second point, this summer Europe has a historic opportunity to cut off oxygen to Russian revanches once and for all. NATO July summit is quite the time that allows to remove the security uncertainty in Europe. And can you imagine that a part of of your country, let's say Enhoven or Groningen, could be outside the common security and legal space 
of the Netherlands in a grey zone, something like this, which will attract the attention of international criminals. It's impossible. Of course it's impossible, it's absurd. The same way it's impossible and absurd to leave Ukraine outside of the security and legal space of our common homeland, Europe. Ukraine should receive a decision on the algorithm for joining the alliance. It is clear that we cannot join NATO now, now while the war is going on. But it is possible, possible, I think, and necessary to remove the security and certainly now it is a political, political decision. Russia must see that Ukrainian security will be guaranteed in order to begin to realize itself. Russia only with its own borders. And I call on, on the Netherlands to make this strategically important decision of the security of Europe decision on Ukraine and NATO. And the third point, defense means people, armed people. The more powerful the weapon and the longer the fire range is, the more lives, real lives, are saved from enemy each day strikes. So, cherishing the value of life and maintaining defensive taboos among allies who are supposed to protest to protect life is an obvious contradiction. The longer the taboos on weapons persist, the more our soldiers give their lives on maintaining the defense when the weapons are not powerful or not long-ranged enough, or when Russia fighter jets are more effective than the aircrafts of those who really defend Europe. As of now, all this persists, unfortunately, the taboos of weapons. Is it for a long time? It depends on all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, we remember the leadership of Netherlands in initiating the delivery of the Panzerhaubitze 2000. And we are grateful. Thank you again. We are grateful for you for, for such great decision for Patriot system and other weapons, it's huge. And, uh, and we remember that the Netherlands were the first uh, to say that the F-16 is not a taboo. And your leadership truly provides results. So let's together provide new ones. And I believe that during my next visit, I believe I will have it. Of course, if you will invite <laughs> yes, after, after, after this meeting. Yes, I think so, yes. No, uh, I, will, I, will be, I will be able also only to thank you the way I, I do it today. And I believe that Ukrainians and all of Europeans will be able to thank you in particular for the bringing the peace closer and for saved saved lives saved by joint actions as we've already seen may we never forget all men and women children adults whose lives were taken away by by wars and glory to every hero who fights for life to win to win now thank you very much for your attention for your support Thank you. Slava Ukraine.